project that we're talking about is insomnia and uh, it was definitely one of the most uh, amazing experiences for me as an actor working on that film um, I mean first of all working with Christopher Nolan was an amazing experience he um, really had a just a rare um, control over the set in a very gentle way. I mean, you could just tell that the crew and the actors and everybody had a sense of confidence um, that he was always, you know, five steps ahead of where we were. So, um, when you create an environment with that kind of confidence, it just helps, helps everything. And working with Al Pacino, obviously, was, was an amazing privilege. Um, you know, as a young actor, what, what more could you ask for to, in a sense, be locked in a room for uh, two days or more just you know going at it and you know getting to cuss Al Pacino out so that was great it was it was a lot of fun and you know I've talked to a lot of different people about working with with actors like that and a lot of times they say it's it's extremely nerve-wracking and I think it can be but for some reason it was just more exciting than anything else I mean when you're working with great actors that's really what it's all about because you know acting is not a, a one-person thing it's all about um, listening and, and um, you know just being there with that other person and so it was great I mean he would uh, improv a lot throughout the scenes and all the different takes um, and so you know it, it, it it kept me on my toes in a very fun way, and uh, I learned that from a young age working with um, with Anthony Geary as well. So it kind of felt like I was at home, and uh, it was just a great experience all around. I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful time, and uh, I definitely hope to be able to work with uh, Christopher Nolan again. He's an incredible director and a, a really, uh, really good person as well. The audition for Insomnia was on the Warner Brothers lot and um, I remember reading with uh, with uh, Chris um, who I didn't really know at the time in terms of I didn't know his work and I didn't know I think I might have rented Memento right before the audition or right after I can't can't remember which one um, and I I, you know, got the script fairly late and I had a choice, you know, was I going to prepare the scene really well or was I going to try to read the entire script and then have the scene prepared, you know, uh, um, sort of prepared. And so I decided to just prepare the scene. I figured, I read through it and I thought, you know, I think I, think I understand enough about what's happening here. And so, um, you know, I pretty much memorized it, I think. And, uh, I read the scene, and then, you know, he asked me in the audition if I'd read the script, and you have that that moment of, okay, <laughs> am I going to be honest here, or am I going to say, you know, but I was honest, and I said, no, I haven't read the script, and and he said, you know, uh, you, you should read it, and so I was like, okay, I'll go do that, but um, it was, uh, I, I, auditions are, are strange, because sometimes you can go in there and just really do, you know, amazing work and you have a great feeling about it and um, for one reason or another it doesn't work out. This was one of those auditions where I walked out of there thinking, you know, okay, I did a good job but, you know, it doesn't feel better than a lot of the other ones and, you know, I ended up getting it so it was, I was pretty pretty shocked and, and excited. There's an interesting story within uh, uh, Insomnia and, and how it relates to Tuck Everlasting because those films um, both shot at the same time and I had um, gotten the offer for Insomnia and then a few days later I got the offer for Tuck Everlasting and basically what happened was you know it was a situation where they were saying I, I wasn't going to be able to do both films because of the, the scheduling conflicts and so there were different different people you know giving me really strong advice to do you know one film over the other for various reasons you know one is a leading a lead role the other is a small role you know you might get cut out of the film I mean you know who knows and uh, you know I basically um, just really felt strongly in my heart that regardless of how it was going to come out and regardless of the conventional wisdom I just felt like I was supposed to do insomnia 
even though it was a small role and, you know, people were saying that it just doesn't make as much sense in terms of your career and things like that, but I just really felt like I was supposed to do it. So, you know, I basically, um, it was a interesting moment standing up to a lot of the different people in my sphere, my sphere and saying, you know, this is, this is what I'm going to do and we're just going to see what happens. Um, and then, amazingly, you know, um, they called back and said, we said this couldn't happen, but it just happened, and they're going to make the schedules work. Um, so it was great. I mean, I flew back and forth from um, Baltimore um, back to um, Vancouver, B.C., where they were shooting Insomnia, and I was able to do both films. So it's kind of fun for me uh, doing a character like Randy in Insomnia, who is a, you know, an edgy, troubled, uh, lost soul, and... Uh, and then doing, you know, Jesse Tuck, who is a very, um, just, uh, you know, optimistic, joyful kind of character. So it was, it was fun to change wardrobe and change characters during that time. It was great.